Welcome to this special edition of the 22nd Annual Independent Games Festival Awards. As I'm sure you may have noticed, we are not all in San Francisco celebrating together. Instead, I am in a forest and you all are tuning in from wherever you happen to be in the world right now. I have plenty that I would love to say, but I understand attention spans are short and I'm sure you all want to get to the awards, so I'll keep this short and sweet. These are interesting times, and as a perpetual optimist, all I can think of is how much I really love our community. Even when we're faced with extraordinary circumstances, collectively we're always moving in the right direction, and we're supporting each other in really remarkable ways. And while I wish that we were all together celebrating the incredible games and teams that will be honored tonight, I am grateful that we have this opportunity to create a virtual celebration and to include so many of you in sharing this experience with us. So here's to you, the games and teams who received honorable mentions, the people who worked tirelessly to make the IGF happen, and of course, best of luck to all the finalists. So let's get this crazy experiment started. Hi, welcome to the IGFs. I'm Trent Custers from League of Geeks, and we're here at our studio in Melbourne. We couldn't come together in person this year, but I'm honored to be your host for the 22nd annual IGF Awards. And thanks to our lead sponsor, ID at Xbox, and a whole heap of last minute elbow grease, we'll be doing things a little bit differently. This year, we'll be celebrating the past year's indie achievements like this. No envelope opening, no tuxedo, just me, you, and a bunch of sweet awards. Look, 2020's been kind of grim so far, but let's not forget the heartbreak that was 2019. And I'm talking specifically that it was a big year for video game breakups. Bungie left Activision's bosom and is now strutting around with that big single energy. Reggie, our sweet, sweet Reggie, left Nintendo. And I mean, Nintendo's gotta be pretty cut up about it. They're dating a guy literally named Doug Bowser. They're with Bowser. Now, no one wants their ex to date a bad guy. Nintendo's dating the bad guy. And then, of course, there's the messiest, most public breakup of 2019. Blizzard and Hong Kong. But these are all AAA woes. If you're an indie developer, there are more hot singles on the indie dating scene than ever before. And they've all got a shit ton of real weird money. That's why this IGF, we're launching Indie Daddy Dating. We've rounded up the hottest, most cashed up daddies, and we've got them here for you tonight. Our first daddy has always been pretty well off, but they've recently come into a lot of money with their newly formed children's entertainment empire. Meet Epic. Your friends won't really approve of them, but the perks are overwhelming, and they never ask for their change back. Our next daddy is smart, trendy, intellectual. Your shot at everlasting love could be Apple Arcade. This design Ford hottie will promise you the world, but once they've got you, they might just check out. Our next daddy is all about performance, strength, power, but with a playful jock vibe. Meet Xbox. They got into the dating game late because they were all about hanging with the boys until their 30s. But they're our only daddy with an axe deodorant endorsement. Okay, for our next daddy, let's go a little bit more mysterious. Flashy car, rich AF, and they know where you live. It's Google Stadia. Even though they've told you 40 times what they do, you still don't understand. Now look, if commitment isn't really your thing, and let's be honest, this is the independent games festival after all. 
then our next option may be right up your alley. Devolver, Annapurna and Raw Fury, our indie publishers. Sure, they may sleep on a mattress on the floor. And yes, they might even ask you to pick up the check from time to time. But you'll never be tied down again, unless you're into that. <laughs> oh, all right, let's give out some awards. This first category terrifies established developers. This is the IGF for Best Student Game. Best Student Game Orbital Bullet Developed by Smokestab Eve Masulo Robin Machel A Juggler's Tale, developed by Kaleidos Cube. Stefan Overlay, Enzio Probst, Dominique Schuen, Elias Kramer. Forgotten, developed by Mutiny Games. The Forgotten Team. Neon Beats, developed by Okio Games. The Neon Beats Team. Boar Dome, developed by Goblin Rage. The Boar Dome Team. Nothing in Sight, developed by the Nothing in Sight team. And the winner is... Boar Dome. Okay. Thank you, YGF, for giving us this award. It's very nice to uh, be here and uh, whether or not we receive actually this award. <laughs> we asked, you voted. Now the winner of this award can rest easily knowing that they've appeased our almighty overlords, the gamers. This is the winner of the IGF Audience Award, chosen by you. Audience Award, and the winner is A Short Hike. Oh, wow. Um, I'm so honored and excited to uh, receive the Audience Award. Um, thank you to everybody who voted for my weird little hiking game and um, everybody who helped me get here today and make the game. I really want to thank my partner, Don, who uh, supported me throughout the entire journey and her wisdom and her contributions to the game made it something a lot better um, and it wouldn't have been the same without her. I really want to thank um, uh, my friend Andrew who contributed art to the game and spent time with me while I was working on it. Um, I want to thank uh, Mark for making the amazing soundtrack, um, David for making the amazing logo, and uh, everyone else who helped contribute to the game and um, made it what it is uh, today. And of course also my mom who always encouraged me and supported me throughout this entire journey, um, my entire life. So uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone and yeah, it's, it's such an honor. You can't hear good audio, you feel it. Oh, well, you can obviously hear good audio, but good audio is a type of glue. It's a bonding agent that takes all the different elements and pulls them together into one cohesive piece. This is the past year's greatest achievement in game glue. This is excellence in audio.
Excellence in Audio Observation Developed by No Code Omar Khan Robin Fink John McKellen Vectronom Developed by Ludopium Juan Orjuela Astrologaster Developed by Nyam Yam Andrea Balcadoro Catherine Neal Jennifer Schneiderwright Adele Cutton Knights and Bikes Developed by Foam Sword Kenneth Young Daniel Pemberton Rex Crowley Mu Yu Mutazione Developed by Deguta Fabrique The Mutazione Team Untitled Goose Game Developed by House House M. Halberstadt Dan Golding And the winner is... Mutazione Hi, I'm Hannah Nitkin, studio lead at Digu de Fabrique. We are totally delighted to accept this incredible honour. Mutazione has been held by many people's hands and hearts and minds over the 10 years since creative lead Nils Denikin dreamt up the wonderful world of the game. And one of the biggest influences during that time has been composer and musician Alessandro Coronas. Over to you, Alessandro. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah, and to everyone at IGF, thank you so, so much. It's a big privilege, and I want to extend a huge thank you to the whole team. As we all know, making games is a gigantic team effort, so this is also for you, pals. You know who you are. Um, so thanks again. It's a big honor and lots of love from Sardinia. Thanks very much to the IGF Awards and judges for the nominations in this incredible honour and congratulations to all the other winners, nominees and honourable mentions. These next finalists found innovative ways not just to tell their stories but to help you tell yours. This is Excellence in Narrative. Excellence in Narrative Mutazione, developed by Deguta Fabrique, the Mutazione team. Heaven's Vault, developed by Inkle, John Ingold, Joseph Humphrey, the Heaven's Vault team. El Sinor, developed by Golden Glitch Studios. The El Sinor team. Wide Ocean, Big Jacket, developed by Turn Follow. Ian Ensley, Carter Lodwick, Scott Archer. Eliza, developed by Zachtronics. Matthew Sagey Burns, the Eliza team. Lion Killer, developed by Cece Jiong. And the winner is Heaven's Vault. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Joe. Hello. And we're Inkle. Thank you for this award. It means a huge amount to us. When we started Heaven's Vault five years ago, it seemed like a really good idea, didn't it? 
I mean, yeah, it did seem like a really good idea at the time until we added that entire ancient language that you could decipher. It was so hard. Oh, and that entire narrative that you could play in just about any order, that made the game really hard to build. It was so hard. Anyway, if you played Heaven's Vault, thank you so much. We really hope you enjoyed it. We'll be coming to Switch later this year, and we have a new game called Pendragon, which will be out this year too. So from me and Joe, thanks to Anastasia Wyatt, Laura Dilloway, Pirin Tremithic, Tom Blunden, Sarah Hefford, Lawrence Chapman, and Tom Kale. So it's everyone at Inkle who helped with the project. You guys were amazing. Well done. This is for all of us. Thank you, amazing Inklers. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Game design. We start our own studios so we can design our dream games. And then when we're too busy, we have to hire game designers. These next finalists either hired great game designers or never admitted they were too busy. This is excellence in design. Excellence in design. Katana Zero. Developed by ASCIISoft. Justin Stander. Lonely Mountains Downhill. Developed by Megagon Industries. Jan Bubenik. Daniel Helbig. Noah Karev. Slay the Spire, developed by Mega Crit Games. Casey Yano, Anthony Giovanetti. A Short Hike, developed by Adam Robinson Yu. Mark Sparling. El Sinor, developed by Golden Glitch Studios. The El Sinor team. Patrick's Parabox, developed by Patrick Trainer. And the winner is Patrick's Parabox. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really, really honored to receive this award. I'm, I'm so thankful to so many people who have uh, helped and supported me. So many people, like my family, my online friends from many communities, and my offline friends. And I really hope to continue to help and support others back and to contribute back. I'm so inspired by so many games, so many independent games, and I'm really, really happy to, to be here participating with my own work and to, to be contributing and helping to move things forward and to be a part of it. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, I'm so honored. Excellence in visual art. We were actually nominated for this once, but we didn't win. I guess that's the best thing about hosting these awards remotely, is that I don't have to hand this award to someone else again. Let's take a look at this year's beautiful games. Excellence in visual art. Mutazione. Developed by Deguta Fabrique. The Mutazione team. Knights and Bikes, developed by Foam Sword, Rex Crowley, Mu Yu, Kenneth Young, Daniel Pemberton. Void Bastards, developed by Blue Man Chu, Benjamin Lee, the Void Bastards team.
Creature in the Well, developed by Flight School Studio. Bowden Sayer, Adam Volker. Eastward, developed by Pixpill. Joel Korolitz, Hyperduck Soundworks. Stone Story RPG, developed by Martian Rex and Standard Combo. Gabriel Santos, Rafael Langoni Smith. And the winner is Knights and Bikes. Ah! Oh my God. Oh, this is such an honor. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the IGF. Um, this is just incredible for us. Um, I really want to thank uh, Moo and Kenny and Daniel, uh, the team that all worked on the game with me. Uh, I also want to thank our friends at Double Fine who like, kept us alive and uh, made sure the game could come out. Uh, and I also really want to thank our Kickstarter backers because there is no way that this game would exist without them. So just thank you so much to everyone involved. Um, it's, it's just oh, mind-blowing to, to get this award. Thank you. This next lineup of diverse experiences explores and celebrates the vast potential of our medium. Let's take a look at the finalists for the IGF Nuovo Award for our annual dose of What the Fuck. Nuovo Award Tales from Off Peak City, Volume 1. Developed by Cosmo D Studios. Greg Cosmo D Heffernan. Julian Solimporta Cordero. Infini. Developed by Barnek. David Martin. Emmerich Morin. The Space Between. Developed by Christoph Frey. Life Tastes Like Cardboard. Developed by Demensa. Promisa. Developed by Julian Palacios, Andrea Chedrado, Domiziano Mazzelli, Martin Palacios. Song of Bloom, developed by Philip Stolenmayer. The Longing. Developed by Studio Zoifts, Anselm Paita, Thomas Kruger, Stefan Michel, Laura Brosi. Pagan, Autogeny. Developed by Oleander Garden. And the winner is The Space Between. Hi everyone, my name is Christoph Frey. I'm the game developer of The Space Between and I'm speaking to you here from the wonderful city of Linz in Austria. I want to thank you for the Nuovo Award and I'm honored to represent an award that is dedicated to the very adventurous exploration of what video games can be. So thanks again and I hope I'll see you soon in real life. Bye. Hello! Due to the circumstances, we can't do this live, so I'm going to do it my preferred way. Heavily edited, 
with an excessive filter. Okay, perfect. Now, all I need to do is introduce the grand prize nominees, but first I want to talk about 2020. Careening into a new decade here, and it turns out that this year is also a notable anniversary for the IGF. 20 years ago, the grand prize winner here was a tank combat game called Treadmarks by Longbow Digital Arts. The founder and lead programmer at Longbow was Seamus McNally. Maybe you've seen his name around somewhere. Seamus was just 21 at the time, but had already made a few games, and in a lot of ways, he was a pioneering indie developer. For one, Longbow was selling their games online digitally. That doesn't sound like a big deal now, but back at the dawn of indie time in 2000, there was no infrastructure and no easy sell without a physical copy. And Seamus made an effort to share his knowledge with other developers about selling games online, but also about technical issues. Even though he was young, he was already a very good programmer, and I remember how useful his articles on 3D engines and hardware were at the time. After Treadmarks, Seamus wasn't able to make another game. He had been fighting Hodgkin's lymphoma for a few years and passed away just one week after winning the grand prize. In his brief time, Seamus showed a kindness, an independence, and especially an openness that set the perfect standard for the IGF. And for me personally, I'm proud to be associated with his name. He's a great model for indies. 20 years so far, and 20 more coming up. And now to segue, the Seamus McNally Grand Prize nominees for 2020. Seamus McNally Grand Prize. Eliza, developed by Zachtronics. Matthew Sagey Burns, The Eliza Team. A Short Hike, developed by Adam Robinson Yu, Mark Sparling. Untitled Goose Game, developed by House House. Mutazione, developed by Deguta Fabrique, the Mutazione team. Slay the Spire, developed by Mega Crit Games, Casey Yano, Anthony Giovanetti. Anodyne 2, Return to Dust, developed by Sean Hantani and Marina Ayano Kitaka. Melos Hantani. And the winner is... A Short Hike. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really, really honored to be selected um, amongst the amazing games here at IGF. Uh, I really want to thank everybody who helped me get here today. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank my partner Dawn, who uh, supported me throughout the entire journey. Um, she always believed in me and the game, even when I wasn't so sure myself, and I don't think the game would have been the same without her wisdom and support. Um, I want to thank Mark, who make, made the amazing soundtrack for the game, um, Andrew for the art and his friendship as I worked on the game. Uh, I want to thank David who made the amazing logo and um, my mom who supported me every step of the way. And uh, I really just want to thank everybody who played the game and gave me feedback and helped shape it into something better. So thank you so, so much. I'm so honored uh, to be selected today. Thank you. Well, there you have it. That's another IGFs in the bag, folks. That's a wrap. Thank you to Lucas Pope for giving someone else a chance this year. Of course, thanks to Kelly Wallach, chairperson of the IGF, all the judges and jurors, our lead sponsor, ID at Xbox. Thanks again for supporting the festival and making it everything that it can be. And speaking of which, I wanted to thank the IGF team 
who make all of this magic happen behind the scenes. I also did want to take a moment to say that our hearts go out to all of those affected by the coronavirus. Be sure to stay safe, people. We'll be back next year live in San Francisco, again for another IGF Awards. Don't you worry about that. Now it's time to watch the Game Developers Choice Awards. This year hosted by Kim Swift. We might even get a chance to finally find out what Death Stranding is all about. Thanks everyone, have a great night. everyone. Uh, so, how about that coronavirus, eh? I'm, I'm sure you're keenly aware GDC isn't happening this week, so that way we can all avoid, you know, disease and pestilence. Since, obviously, it would be super weird for me to be giving the awards in a completely empty auditorium, I was asked to help out with the remote Game Developers Choice Awards because, obviously, you want to tell everyone who won. So here I am, coming to you live. Actually, take that back. Uh, this is pre-recorded. Say hi to the crew. Hi guys. So we are coming to you from sunny Los Angeles, California. I'm a bit disappointed, however, that I don't get to present on stage this year uh, because I had this whole outfit planned. It was pretty great. And I mean, look at these shoes, these absolutely perfect, exquisite foot torture devices that I will not get to wear. Anyways, it is what it is. But hey, the advantage is I could be wearing sweatpants right now and you'd have absolutely no idea. So welcome to my roof. Uh, definitely not your typical setting for the awards. Also, this is my co-host. This is Sunday. You'll be seeing her more. And also, hey, because this is at my house, if you are lucky, you'll get to hear the amazing ice cream truck that rolls around with the broken Lukugaracha horn. It is just fantastic. Well, let's get things rolling. Uh, I've been sitting on who's won for a little bit now and it's killing me to keep it a secret. So, uh, you know what? Let's head inside because it's getting a little warm out. Hey, welcome to the inside of my house. Uh, fair warning, there's probably going to be parrot noises at some point, so like, be prepared for that. Um, oh, hi Sunny. Anyways, these folks are the future of our industry. Brand new developers making exceptional content showing us new facets of what games can be. Compelling storytelling, colorful artwork, and groundbreaking points of view. Here are your nominees for Best Debut. Oh, hey, I rhymed. Best Debut. Zaum, nominated for Disco Elysium. The Disco Elysium team. Mobius Digital, nominated for Outer Wilds. William Cheer Studio, nominated for Manifold Garden. William Cheer, Arthur Bressy, Martin Cavalli, Larissa Okada. Foam Sword, nominated for Knights and Bikes. Rex Crowley, Mu Yu, Kenneth Young, Daniel Pemberton. Chance Agency, nominated for Neocab. Patrick Ewing, Vincent Perea, Paula Rogers, Felix Kramer, And the winner is Zaum. Hello, hi GDC. Uh, we're Zaum, greeting you from rainy London. We're super grateful for the award for best debut. Thank you. Uh, we're sorry we couldn't be there, but hopefully we'll all see you soon enough. All right, thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'm not gonna lie. This right here is my absolute favorite category. Shh, don't tell the other categories. So I learned about a word 
which I'm likely going to butcher saying out loud, uh, hypnagogia, which is that point in time right before you completely fall asleep. Um, it's called threshold consciousness. It's like you can hallucinate and have lucid dreams. And I really feel like innovation and true creativity in games is like manufactured hypnagogia. We create dream states for our players that they get to control. And hey, that's pretty damn cool. Here are your nominees for innovation. Innovation Award. Untitled Goose Game. Developed by House House. Published by Panic. Disco Elysium, developed by Zaun. The Disco Elysium team. Baba is You, developed by Hampuli, RV Takari, Matthias Kerlu. Death Stranding, developed by Kojima Productions, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Outer Wilds, developed by Mobius Digital, published by Annapurna Interactive. And the winner is Baba is You. Hello, everyone. This is Arvid Eikari. Thank you so much for awarding Baba is You in the innovation category. I'm super grateful for that. I'd like to thank three people. Anni Leskela for all the encouragement and support over the years. Niklas Nugren for teaching me a lot about motivation and how to keep working on a project even when not feeling like it. And Lucas Miller for helping me so much over the years and teaching me many things and many ways to make the things I do better. Thank you and thanks to the GDC staff for organizing all of this and all their hard work and take care. Thank you. Once upon a time, I went to nerd school, DigiPen, to get a CS degree. I got about halfway through the degree and realized that not only do I not particularly like programming, I'm like, eh, okay at it, but I buckled down quit playing EverQuest, very, very key, uh, and graduated. If I took one thing away from the experience, however, was the sheer appreciation of how difficult and complicated it is to build the technologies that allow us as designers and artists to bring our visions to life. So let's take the time to appreciate the noms for best technology. Best technology. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Control. Developed by Remedy Entertainment. Published by 505 Games. Sean Donnelly. Tatu Alto. Miko Orenma. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Developed by Infinity Ward. Published by Activision. Apex Legends. Developed by Respawn Entertainment. Published by Electronic Arts. Todd Alderman. Drew McCoy. Mackie McClandish. Chad Granier. Noita. Developed by NOLA Games. Petre Porto, Oli Hariola, Arvi Tikari. And the winner is. Control. Hey, I'm Sean Donnelly, lead programmer of Control. Uh, I'm accepting the GDC award for best technology on behalf of Remedy Entertainment. Thank you so much for this award, it really is a great honor especially when we see the competition in this category. It's kind of insane. Um, big shout out to our in-house engine and tools team, Northlight. And of course, a massive thank you to everyone who actually worked on control, who showed the tech off in the best possible light, 
made the game play, look and sound amazing. Thank you so much. It's time to announce the award for best narrative. First though, I had a very serious request from a friend of mine. We need to talk. Up for this category, we have both Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds. At what point in time do you think both teams found out about the other game's name and were like, oh shit, that's unfortunate. Luckily for both of them, they are excellent, along with the rest of the nominees in this category. Here are your nominees for Best Narrative. Best Narrative. Disco Elysium. Developed by Zaum. The Disco Elysium Team. Control. Developed by Remedy Entertainment. Published by 505 Games. Josh Stubbs. Clay Murphy. Sam Lake. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The Outer Worlds. Developed by Obsidian Entertainment. Published by Private Division. The Outer Worlds Narrative Design Team. Outer Wilds. Developed by Mobius Digital. Published by Annapurna Interactive. And the winner is Disco Elysium. Hi! Hey GDC. We are Zaum and uh, we are sending you greetings from Rainy Revachol. And thank you so much for the best narrative award. So sorry we couldn't be there in person, but we will definitely see you in the summer. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 If you know Kate, you know Kate's heroes. Kate loves strength, she loves misfits, and she loves rebels. She loves them so much that she frequently dresses like them. Kate's Thor cosplay is some of the most beautiful, powerful costuming I've seen outside of an actual Hemsworth. In the 90s, when Microsoft and Ensemble Studios released the first Age of Empires game, it contained a grievous error. For totally benign reasons, the game misrepresented a crucial point of cultural history, an error that was so egregious that a regional executive of ours was actually put in jail. We needed a hero. We needed somebody to help us fix our problem. We needed somebody maybe from Asgard sent to save us from ourselves. And that's when I got to meet my favorite geographer, Kate Edwards. Kate is a rare being, a leader introvert. As a kid, Kate would frequently look up from wandering the playground in a reverie to notice other children following her. And she would demand, why? Why are you following me around? But to me, the answer is obvious. Kate is never lost. Born into a loving and supportive family, her parents established a morality based on doing the right thing, defending the little guy, and taking action where possible that forms the basis of Kate's worldview today. At Microsoft, Kate led the entire company in the establishment of a set of processes for geopolitical reviews and standards that is the basis for our friendly global relationships and authentic cultural representation today. And yes, Kate did help us get our executive out of jail. As director of the IGDA, Kate broadened both her global worldview and also her understanding of the games industry. She also gained fame for her outspoken opinions on the imbalances and the injustices that threaten independent game developers even today. She formed a kind of Dumbledore's army of advocates, focusing on topics ranging from crunch to diversity to safety from online hate mobs. Kate expanded the reach of the IGDA to emerging game development regions like Bangladesh, Tunisia, Egypt, and many others. And her advocacy hasn't ended in the years post-IGDA. Last year alone, Kate traveled to more than 25 countries, and she spent more than 76 hours on stage or in panels, inspiring game developers everywhere. Her global focus is what makes her so perfect for the executive director of the Global Game Jam. Although she has confided in me, she believes it's time to expand Global Game Jam's horizons somewhere 
in a galaxy far, far away, the rebels need our help. I would like to thank GDC and the selection committee and all my fellow game creators around the world for this tremendous honor of receiving the ambassador award this year. I was honestly taken by surprise by this. And so I don't know what to say other than I'm truly humbled and, and I'm very thankful. So, you know, thank you so much for this recognition. Um, it means a tremendous amount to me. Um, you know, as we cannot be together this year because of the postponement of GDC, obviously because we're all aware of global events at the moment, I am glad that we can at least connect via the stream and, um, you know, as, as game creators and as people who live in a digital world, we have the ability to maintain this connection no matter what. And so we are very resilient in that way. And so as I'm standing here in the uh, Hoth, in uh, actual Finsa, Norway, where they filmed The Empire Strikes Back over 40 years ago, I wanted to share just a few quick thoughts to you um, about what this award means to me and, and what it means to the industry. You know, when we talk about being an ambassador and what that means, um, you know, it, it's about putting our best self forward and, and trying to present the industry in the best light and to make change happen for the better. And, you know, what does it really mean to make change? I think for a lot of us, you know, we find that challenging today because we don't really know where to start. And I think in my own experience, where it really starts is with ourselves. If we can figure out what is stopping us from taking that step to help somebody or to take that step forward or to be a voice for someone who's marginalized, um, you know, we have to find the confidence in ourselves to get over our imposter syndrome and get to that point where we have that confidence. You know, whether you actually believe in that confidence or not, it's more about believing in the reason to have that confidence, which is for other people. And I know in my experience, that's what's really been driving me. I mean, I have been driven for a long time now by this notion that evil triumphs when good people do nothing. And I really believe that. And so that's what has been driving my action in this industry, because I want people to be better and I want the industry to be better. And I want us to treat each other with with more respect and to treat us other treat each other with fairness um, and being inclusive in how we approach everything. You know, at one point, John F. Kennedy, the former U.S. president said, if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? And really, I think that's something that all of us need to challenge ourselves with. When we see something that we don't like, when we see something that we are dissatisfied with in this industry, and it could be a huge issue that affects all of us, or it could be a tiny thing that affects your local community, you have to ask yourself, why is it not changing? And then how can you be that agent of change to make it happen? And you know, in my experience, and I think what people have seen, in, at least in my actions, is that basically I made a decision that I'm going to be the one to step forward and actually try and make change happen. And it's not because I'm better than anybody. It's not because I have more experience than anybody. It's just be it's a simple act of will. And it's, a, it's actually a decision saying, I want this to change for the better because I think it's going to help all of us. And so, you know, as you think about this, and, and again, I just, I'm so thankful for this award um, and for, for this kind of honor. Um, you know, just think about for yourselves, what does it mean to be an ambassador for this industry? And so I'm just gonna leave you with that challenge. And, um, you know, I know that if all of us are doing our part and are trying as best as we can to be that, that voice for the industry and for other people who are marginalized, you know, this industry and this, and this world, frankly, is gonna get better but it's gonna take all of us to take that step. So once again, thank you so much for this award and I just am deeply appreciative and I hope to see you at uh, GDC next time. Audio teams are the unsung heroes of our industry, always the last ones to get to bring their art to life in a game's pipeline. And of course, those players that mute the audio and don't wear headphones, ugh, the worst, right? Audio really makes a game. Corrective guidance cues, warnings of things to come, and memorable tunes. How many times have you woken up with a theme song stuck in your head? <whistles> Let's give the audio and music on these wonderful games the appreciation they truly deserve. Here are your nominees for Best Audio. Best Audio. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Developed by Simogo. Published by Annapurna Interactive.
Control. Developed by Remedy Entertainment. Published by 505 Games. Villa Sorsa. Guli Gunarsson. Luca Piro. Untitled Goose Game. Developed by House House. Published by Panic. M. Halberstadt. Dan Golding. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Developed by Infinity Ward. Published by Activision. And the winner is... Control. Hi, my name is Ville Sorsa. I'm the lead audio designer here at Remedy Entertainment. On the behalf of the entire Remedy Audio team, we're super excited about the fact that we just won the GDC award. I would like to thank our development team, external partners, and especially 505 Games to giving us this opportunity to work on this title. I would also like to thank you for sharing this very special moment with us. Thank you. Whew. Filming an award show is hard work. Um, time for a snack, what do you say? I baked muffins for the crew. Um, what do you think? Huh, all right. Well, this next category of folks maybe took sci-fi movies, TV, and books a little too seriously uh, and swore a sacred oath to bring holodecks and oasis back to the real world. Here are your nominees for best VR AR game. Best VR AR game. Vader Immortal, a Star Wars VR series. Developed by ILMX Lab and Oculus Studios. Published by Disney. The Vader Immortal Team. Blood and Truth. Developed by SCEE Studio, London. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The Blood and Truth Team. Asgard's Wrath. Developed by Sanzaro Games. Published by Oculus Studios. Boneworks. Developed by Stress Level Zero. Brandon Lash. Alex Knoll. Pistol Whip. Developed by Cloudhead Games. And the winner is... Vader Immortal, a Star Wars VR series. Thank you so much to the judges and to all of our fans. With Vader Immortal, we set out to make an experience that lets you step inside and live the adventure. It's not just storytelling, it's story living. And we're here proudly representing our talented team at ILM X Lab. Vader Immortal represents a new type of entertainment that can affect people in fundamentally different ways than other storytelling mediums. Special thanks to Colin Mackay, John Wynn, Jung Yoon Choi, Steve Henricks, Jeff Greeby, Ron Manon, Kurt Perry, Marissa Martinez, and Aaron McBride. Thanks to Jose Perez, Chip Carl, Sarah Barrick, and to Kevin Boland and the Skywalker team. Thanks to the talented cast and to our writer David Goyer. Thanks to Vicky Beck and Mark Miller. Thanks to Mike Duran and Colm Slevin at Oculus and to Lucasfilm Story Group and the folks at Op Epic for your support. Finally, we couldn't have done it without the talented teams at our third party partners, Clutch Play, Ninja Theory and Virtuous. Our medium is young, but it is very powerful and we're just getting started. Oh, hi, uh, Roadshow, right? Yeah, okay. Who would have ever guessed back in 2007 that the iPhone would have had this much of an impact on our industry? Mobile games can deliver moving and dreamy experiences, motorcycle races, sword battles, allow us to play soldier and play the most ridiculous game of golf, all in the palm of your hand. Here are your best mobile game nominees. Best mobile game. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Developed by Simogo. 
Published by Annapurna Interactive. What the Gulf, developed by Triband Productions. Published by The Label Limited. The Triband Team. Grindstone, developed by Capybara Games. The Grindstone Team. Sky, Children of the Light. Developed by That Game Company. The Sky Dev Team. Call of Duty Mobile. Developed by Teamy Studios. Published by Activision. And the winner is... What the Gulf? When I first started to learn about digital art and creating the pretties for video games, one thing that struck me is just how absolutely ugly and gruesome things started before they became beautiful and took shape. Weird blobs of brown at the beginning of a piece of concept art, chunky shapes for models, and have you ever seen an unwrapped material for a character's face? Like, yikes. It rubs the lotion on its skin, am I right? Luckily for us tonight, we get to see the gorgeous, exquisite, and glorious end products of these extremely talented artists. Here are your nominees for Best Visual Art. Best Visual Art. Control. Developed by Remedy Entertainment. Published by 505 Games. Yana Polkenen. Stuart McDonald. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Developed by From Software. Published by Activision. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Developed by Simogo. Published by Annapurna Interactive. Disco Elysium. Developed by Zaum. The Disco Elysium Team. And the winner is... Control. Hi, this is Janne Pulkinen, art director from Remedy. I'm honored to accept the GDZ award for best visual art for Control. Thank you, this is amazing. Brutalism plays a big part in Control, so I'd first like to thank our world design director, Stuart MacDonald, for doing incredible job with the environment. Then I would like to thank the key members of the art team, Antti Puomio, Elmeri Raitanen, Damien Stempniewski, Riho Kroll, Miro Westerinen and Leonardo Kalamati. Thank you. Then of course I would like to thank our creative director Sam Lake and game director Mikael Kasurinen for having the courage to build something this unique. Then finally I would like to thank the whole team here at Remedy for building an environment of trust where all the weirdest and wildest ideas are allowed to survive and flourish. Thank you. The first time Roberta Williams played Colossal Cave Adventure, she was transfixed. It was a computer game unlike anything she'd ever played before. Literary, narrative, fantastical. She burned through that game, then others, and when she ran out of games altogether, she took matters into her own hands. She sat down at her kitchen table and designed her own. 
It was 1979, and Roberta Williams was 26 years old. From that initial moment, a truly unconventional legacy would rise. Born Roberta Lynn Howard in 1953, the woman who would one day become the queen of adventure games grew up quietly in the suburbs of northern Los Angeles. That first game became Mystery House. Her husband, Ken Williams, programmed the game, but she designed it and drew its images, making Mystery House not just the first adventure game with graphics, but one of the earliest examples of a separation between programmer and designer. In a moment when most people didn't know what personal computers were good for, Roberta and Ken Williams would strike out on their own adventure to press the limits of computing in the name of entertainment. Together, they founded Sierra Online, a company that needs no introduction in the annals of video game history. For much of the 1980s and 90s, Sierra was the largest publisher of home entertainment software in the world, and flagship among its titles was Roberta's King's Quest series, a bright and lively collection of eight games spanning nearly 20 years of production and millions of copies sold, best remembered today for their surreal mashup of folklore and fable, mythology and legend. Only in King's Quest could Medusa share a landscape with evil wizards or Pegasus fly over Dracula's castle. Overriding each of these worlds, however, was a basic narrative. Find your destiny, find your family, and protect them at all costs. Counterposed to King's Quest are Roberta's domestic horrors, Mystery House, The Colonel's Bequest, and Phantasmagoria, in which families are trying to kill you and homes are places where you die. Roberta Williams' oeuvre expresses a narrative expansiveness few other designers have ever endeavored. So it's 2020, and we're here to acknowledge what Roberta Williams never doubted, that she was a pioneer. In the years since she left the game industry in 1988, she has been reluctant to embrace industry recognition. But perhaps it's we who need to give her this reward more than she needs to receive it, that we're the ones who need to say we remember because too often the industry would rather forget. Perhaps the legacy of the woman herself does for this industry what her games did nearly 40 years earlier. Let us know that other stories are possible. It is my deepest honor to celebrate Roberta Williams as the recipient of the 2020 IGF and Game Developers Choice Award. I just want to thank the Game Developers Conference for bestowing on me this year the honor, the incredible honor, for the Pioneer Award for Computer Game Design. With the help of Ken, my husband, Ken Williams, one of the greatest programmers around, and he still is, he still is programming, he loves it. Uh, with his help and uh, expertise, with the, our very first Apple II computer to provide the means by which we could do this, we were able to design our very first game, Mystery House, back in 1980. And I did design it on the proverbial kitchen table big pieces of paper. I said I would love to have graphics if that was possible and rather than being a text adventure game and he said oh that's that's pretty hard I don't know uh, but let, let's see let's look around and he found something called a graphics tablet that was just like a piece of acrylic with like a, kind of this magnetic arm which is one reason why the the art and the pictures on Mystery House don't look so good. It's not so, so much that I'm a bad artist which I am, but I'm not that bad. It's that that was just very primitive to try to draw pictures, but that's the way we did it. And people were amazed at the time. There were actually pictures on at an Apple computer. I finally did retire in, I believe, 1997 when we sold our company, and, and which was one of the saddest days in my life. And uh, it, was, it was very hard for me. But I did, and uh, Ken and I went into other other adventures over the years. Mainly, uh, we, we circumnavigated oceans around the world. But over those years, 17 years, I, I created uh, probably about 18, 19, 20 games. And then I also worked with uh, some of our designers at Sierra. We were so lucky to have some of the best developers, designers, programmers, artists, animators, musicians in the industry. And I was just so lucky to be able to work with, the, with, all, with all of the talent that we had. It, it was just a highlight of my life and I'm so happy and so glad that the Game Developers Conference decided to, uh, to honor me with this uh, very 
a, a humble, I'm humbled actually. I don't even have words. I'm just, I'm awed and very happy and very honored to receive this, this award. And so on behalf of myself, Ken, and all the people that worked with us at Sierra Online, I want to thank you so very much. The diversity in the design category this year is absolutely amazing to me. Be a post-apocalyptic mailman, fly spaceships in a time loop, wordsmith your way to success, exact revenge as a shinobi, and be a jerk goose? Yes, absolutely. Hong Kong, my friends. I'm issuing a challenge in our industry right here and now. Can we strive to continue to be this diverse in the games that we offer? I want to live in these worlds. Without any further ado, here are the nominees for Best Design. Oh, and that's Mando. Best Design. Baba Is You. Developed by Hampuli, RV Takari. Matthias Kerlu. Outer Wilds. Developed by Mobius Digital. Published by Annapurna Interactive. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Developed by From Software. Published by Activision. Untitled Goose Game. Developed by House House. Published by Panic. And the winner is... Baba is you. Hello everyone, this is Arvita Ekari. Thank you so much for awarding Baba is you in the best design category. I'm extremely grateful for that. As for thanks, I would firstly like to thank the GDC staff for all their hard work. I cannot imagine how much it must have taken to turn such a large event into a digital one on such a short notice. I would also like to thank the same three people regardless of what happens in the ceremony. So if you hear the same names later or if you heard them earlier, then well, my apologies. Um, anyway, I'd like to thank Anni Leskela for all the support and encouragement over the years. I'd like to thank Nicholas Nugren for teaching me a lot about motivation and how to work when feeling unmotivated. And I would like to thank Lucas Meller for teaching me a lot about how to make games and how to do the things I do better. Thank, thanks to all of you and have a very nice GDCA ceremony. Thank you. Please join me in somber remembrance of colleagues and members of our community that we have lost over the last year. Let's cherish and reflect on their accomplishments and the joy that they have brought to our lives.
There comes a time in the show where we all look at ourselves and think, wouldn't it be nice if we had more things to vote on? After all, what is an award show if not to give out awards, right? And hey, audience awards is like, what, now an eight-year tradition? We're going to hit that decade soon. We've actually had some really good ones in the past, too. Kerbal Space Program, Naya Automata, Beat Saber. Let's find out who wins this year. And the winner is... Sky, Children of the Light. All right, we won. Uh, hey. I think, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is strange that yeah. we, are, we are not at GDC, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the energy. And thank you so much for giving us the honor uh, for the GDC Audience Award. Uh, and, you know, Sky has been a, a seven year long development process. Um, it was not easy. And uh, without, uh, you know, our players' support, um, without your support, we would not start that game company and we would not have been making these very difficult uh, but beautiful games. Um, and thank you so much to spend your time and to play our game and also just come to GDC to vote for us. Um, it, it meant a lot for us and, uh, you know, making making Sky is, is difficult, but uh, we feel very happy that you are with us. And uh, again, uh, we won't let you down and uh, see you in Sky. Yeah. Hey, right, thank, thank you. you. My friends, your adorable puppo time has almost come to a close as we have reached the penultimate of awards. If Sun actually understood what was happening right now, she'd be super excited because all of the games up for this category are real damn good. Well, here we go. The last Game of the Year nominees of the decade. Game of the Year. Death Stranding. Developed by Kojima Productions. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Control. Developed by Remedy Entertainment. Published by 505 Games. Yuha Vainio. Mikhail Kasarinin. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Developed by From Software. Published by Activision. <laughs> Untitled Goose Game. Developed by House House. Published by Panic. Developed by Mobius Digital. Published by Annapurna Interactive. And the winner is Untitled Goose Game. Hello. Hey, uh, if uh, if this is being played, then that means that we have won best game. Um, <laughs> we really never ever expected that our game would resonate with people in the way that it, uh, that it has. Uh, and so it's very strange and kind of incredibly nice to receive this award. 
Uh, we had a lot of help uh, in making this game. Uh, so we'd like to thank uh, our sound designer, M. Halberstadt, uh, Dan Golding, who did our music, Kalonika, who helped define kind of the look of our game, Sheree Davidson, who helped make our game accessible to as many people uh, as we could. Uh, and this game never would have been made without the support of our publisher, Panic. Uh, we would also like to take, we would also like to thank Film Victoria for their support, uh, both of our game, but also of the, the local scene. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Game developers. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, that's our show. Congratulations to all of our winners. Uh, you better properly celebrate tonight. Um, and I want to give a huge thank you to Sandesh and Simon for taking a chance and inviting me to host this year's awards. Also, let's hear it for the video editors that are cutting together this particular video. And thank you to I Am 8-Bit for being in my house today uh, and filming all of this. Um, so. Finally, uh, I want to thank everyone for being so patient and understanding this unusual process uh, with GDC this year. I hope everyone has the absolute bestest, most wonderful of days, evenings, or whenever you happen to be watching this. Um, and um, say goodbye. Bye. No, seriously, goodbye. Get get out of my house. Get go go away. Go. <laughs>